plagued your early career? So we talked a little bit before about some of them, but can you elaborate mm-hmm. a little bit more in terms of some of the hurdles you've experienced with injuries? Well, the, the one I just spoke about, that was a pretty big one when I was a teenager, so two years out of sport. Uh, the hard thing about that, it took a long time to diagnose it because now, you know, you've got MRIs and, you know, we just those days you just sort of, I think, had X-rays or um, I think the technology wasn't that great. So that was a really big one. Um, Atlanta, uh, just doing a gym session. I got a bulging disc in my L4. Um, so that was a bit of an issue and it got to the stage I'll never forget I I couldn't run the 100 there but I ran the 200 and I'll never forget walking over to the 200 meters and thinking I haven't been able to do block starts for six weeks which is a bit of a problem when you're in Olympics you know I did I did reasonably well considering I also too had a big tape straight across my stomach in a cross mode because every time I would hyperextend my back um uh, it would mean that it would put pressure on that bulging disc so they put this tape across my stomach so every time I ran I had this massive tape so that actually got just as sore as my stomach (laughs) this did my back in the end because of the amount of tape that had to get ripped on and off but the things you do like you don't care I mean just as like a deterrent was it yeah it's just to make sure you weren't um hyperextending which is yeah which was causing a lot of problems and then my really big one was um was the Commonwealth Games when I was winning a gold medal and my knee collapsed but that knee issue started six weeks earlier and um that was a pretty tough one actually come through that um but yeah, and then coming off the back of that and working towards the Sydney Olympics, which I shared a little bit earlier on, um, that was really challenging. But again, very rewarding, you know, and that's why the people go, what makes you keep going? You know, you keep going because you love the sport. Secondly, you always remember the good times and you want to get that feeling again. And um, luckily I got that chance to get that feeling again. And it's just so rewarding. Um, I just think resilience is key with everybody, you know, with our young athletes, our older athletes. And one thing about injuries, it does make you resilient. And I think you need to experience it to a certain level just to, you know, because it's tough. Um, But if you can avoid it, obviously, it's a very good thing as well. (laughs) Do you think you would have pulled the plug if the doctor said you could never compete again? No, probably not. I still would have tried for sure. But luckily, they didn't tell me that at the time. Yeah. But um, it was frustrating time, though. Like, I'd, I'd tell the story of going back to the track and then I'm running and I'm, I'm thinking I'm not limping and Jackie would laugh laugh at me nice, in a nice way. I go, I'm not, not limping, am I? She goes, oh, yeah, you are so limping. <laughs> and then finally getting back to running and then, like, having 10-year-old kids beating me and then they'd go to class the next day and they go, guess what, Mel, I told everyone in show and tell. You know, this is a, this is a twenty eight year old woman who's trying to beat a ten year old. Um, so uh, yeah, it, you know, it was it was definitely challenging. It'll be interesting to think. I think I still, if the Olympics were somewhere else, I would have still given it a crack because you're a long time retired anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, it was just rewarding. It was so much fun. It really was. But to think coming through that and then to have such a phenomenal year in 2000, um, mm. it must be satisfying to think about, you know, coming through those injuries. What what would you say, pin your hat on in terms of what was the most effective, um, whether it be strategy or did you develop some sort of thought process or, you know, how did you over- overcome those injuries in order to have such a fantastic year in that 2000 Well, I'm a big fan of um, having a plan of attack. And I think that's what you need. And that's one of the things I notice with my athletes when things aren't going well, is that you've got to go, okay, this is our plan. And you can't look at the bigger picture. You've just, and it's a cliche. It's one of the biggest in sport, but it's true. You just got to take every day at a time. And I think that it was really key for me. And and people who are listening have probably gone through this. Sometimes you go three steps, you know, two steps forward, four steps back. And that's the frustrating thing. It really is. But the uh, one thing, and I'm going through this with my daughter at the moment, who's also running, is that you've really got to listen to your body. 
that's what you do. I mean, we all want to do stuff. We want to be part of everything. We don't want to miss out. But you really have to listen to your body and be smart with it. And, you know, and I think that's really key. So if you've got people, good people around you managing that, and luckily I did, I had some really good people um, managing that with me, um, then it make, it can make a really massive difference too. But it's like, um, you know, when you go to a physio and a physio says you have to do these exercises, well, you probably get about 80% of people walking away and they don't do those exercises. You actually have to do those exercises. So they, it's all for a reason. So it's the one percenters that makes the biggest difference. You should, and people don't think it's a big deal, but it actually is a really big deal. It's really important to do.